polynomial um, geometry, okay? In order for this, there are a set of formulas that you need to be able to recall from geometry. They are provided here, okay? Circumference, area of a circle, perimeter of a rectangle, area of a triangle, area of a square, area of a rectangle, volume of a prism, volume of a cylinder. Do all of these look familiar? Yes? All right, here we go. So first example, and the thing is because there's infinite amount of shapes, right? Mm -hmm. So we only can do so many examples together, but the reality is, do we know which one they're going to give us on the test? No, no, we don't. So uh, I did as many as possible, pretty much. Okay, so the first one up is this rectangle, this rectangle, and it says find the area of the rectangle, right? So in order to find the area of the rectangle, area of a rectangle is length times width. So they gave me my length and they gave me my width. What am I gonna have to do with these two values? Combine them, multiply them, right? Yes, it's multiplication. So you can multiply and divide. Okay. It's adding, subtracting where they don't, okay? All right, I'm gonna tell you right now, you are gonna need some paper because I don't think you're gonna be able to do it on here. Um, you're gonna squeeze it in there? You're going to squeeze it? Okay. So here's my paper. All right, here we go. When we're multiplying, think back to algebra one. When you're multiplying with variables and numbers, you're gonna multiply numbers together and then like variables together, right? Mm -hmm. When we multiply variables, we're just doing what to their powers? Combining with addition, right? We're gonna add their powers. So when I look here, I have six a squared times b to the fourth times three a b squared. So I'm gonna do numbers first. What is six times three? 18. 18. Yes. Next, we're on to our A. We have A to the two, A to the one. What are we doing with their powers? A we're adding them. So we get A cubed. Now we have our B. We have B to the fourth, B to the second. Combine. Six. Six. So what is the area? This. That's your area. Oh, that's my one. That's multiplication. Yes. Now, which one? Anyone's like, oh, I can't do this. So we're just taking things, plugging them into the formula, and then multiplying. Can we do that? See, y'all are all worried about, oh, geometry, molecules, the horror. Was it that bad? Yes. Okay. So we have 18a cubed, b to the sixth is our area. All right, can I clear my box? Anyone still needs this before you erase it? Okay. Beow, 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 beow. All right. On to the next. So this time it says find the area, but what do we have? A circle. A circle. So looking at the top of your paper, what is area of a circle? Pi r squared. Pi r squared, right? Area equals pi r squared. All right. It gives us our radius. Do we see that? Yeah, so all we're doing is plugging that in. So area equals pi times 5w cubed squared. Wait, do we actually have to multiply it by pi? Know. We'll just leave it in pi form. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> so we got to distribute the power, right? You get a power of 2. You get a power of 2. So it becomes pi 5 squared. W to the what? W to the six. Because oh, you multiply. Because the power rule is you multiply. All right, what's our area? What's five squared? 25 pi W6. Wait, wait. That's it. That's all you can do. Mm -hmm. Oh, nope. We don't have any value of W, so there's no, no purpose of multiplying pi. So the area here equals 25 pi W of 6. We would only multiply the pi if they told us what W was. Does that make sense? Yes. So if we don't know the value of W, there's no point of us 
writing out decimals when it's not necessary. For real. For real. All right. Still with me? Yeah. Is it terrible? Yeah. yeah. It is not. Uh, it's right at the top of your paper. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I'm trying to go on the one hour. Try it again. Right. Yeah. So it's. Is this week's assignment? Monday. Monday. All right. So area of, area of a triangle is what? What does it say? Area equals one half base times the height. Do we have our base? Do we have our height? So we plug everything in mm -hmm. one half. What's our base? Four X squared Y. What's our height? Six X Y cubed. Okay, again, when you're multiplying numbers times numbers, like variables at their powers, right? So we get area equals what's half of four? What's two times six? 12. That's our number. Now we're on to our variables. I have x squared and x to the Casper the friendly one, which is x to the three. And then we have y one and y to the third, y four. Well, we multiplied the four by two by half. We said what's half of four? Two. What's two times six? Well. Wait, you said multiply <laughs> half to four. What's half of four? Three. And what was two times six? Twelve. Twelve. So our. Right. Wait, so we divided the half by four. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you said we multiplied the half by. Well, two. you did a half times four. A half times four means four divided by two, which oh, is okay. Two. Okay, I understand it now. Good. All right, so with me? Okay, I'm going to scroll on down, take my little box with me, my little work page. All right, so it says find the volume here. How do you find the volume? Uh, which one is this? Four. Volume equals length times width times height. What's our length times width times height? Three are square. 3R squared, and we have three of them, right? So I am going to cube it because there's three of them. And when we cube it, that means you get a three. You get a three. So what is three to the third? And R to the, R squared to the third. Three to the third is what? 27. Wait, what? I knew that. Three times three times three. Bam. Did we find the volume? Yeah. Volume equals 27 R to the six. Are we catching on? Yeah. Feeling it? Sure. Is it doable? Sure. Okay. Let's get a little harder. Oh. No. All right, so I'm going to leave five and six to you. We're going to jump to seven. We're going to jump to seven. Okay. So on seven, it wants us to find, it says your perimeter equals 10x plus 5y. And it wants us to find the missing side, right? So what am I doing here? Perimeter equals all sides, S1 plus S2 plus S3, right? That's how you find the perimeter. You add everything up, okay? So I know that I have 10X plus 5Y. That's the entire perimeter. And I have S1 and S2, agree? Does it matter which one is S1 and S2? No, it doesn't. So we have 3X plus 4Y, and we have 5X minus Y. But do we know S3? No, this is what we have to get by itself. What do I need to do to get it by itself? I need to do some addition and subtraction, right? Yeah. Because we're doing inverse operations. If my current operations are adding and subtracting, then their inverses are going to be subtracting and adding. 
you don't even have to do PEMDAS. You're literally just adding and subtracting like terms, right? So to begin, three. what do I need to do with 3x? Combined it. Do we see that? Do you want to do it twice or do you want to only have to do it once? Once. Once. So I want to simplify that right side, right? So if I have 3x minus y, that gives me what? Romeo said it. It's going to give me 2y, right? That's not a y. Guys, what did I just do? Don't. I went the wrong way. Nope. Nope. You saw nothing. That like a one. Yep. Nope. It's, I underlined. I meant to underline the 5 and I did oh. not. I was like, that didn't feel right. I was like, why did I get that? Let's try it again. 3x plus 5x. 8x. <laughs> Your teacher was tripping. Who is she? It was Romeo's wrong. Ah. <laughs> we have, I don't know. Oh, man. 4y and negative 1 is going to give me what? 3y. And I still do not know my, this guy. All right, am I ready to start moving things? Yeah, how do I move the 8x? Minus 8x. Minus 8x, and it's gonna join the what over here? The 10x. The 10x, okay? And then I'm gonna do what? Who else has to go? And also subtraction. And it joins as the five. So what am I left with? So we're left with 2x plus 3y equals our? 2y. 2y. What is wrong with me? Oh, my goodness. I don't know. This is called when you don't feel good, maybe you should stay home. Nah. I know. And we're done. Sorry. That was a lot of whoop, whoop, whoop. Miss, you get sick I've I've been feeling good all week actually. Okay. All right. What's confusing? Wait. So uh, what's the answer? How do we get all of that? Okay. The answer is two x plus two y is the third side. Oh. Okay. Okay. So first off, perimeter. Do we know what perimeter means? Yes. Perimeter means to add up all sides. It's a triangle. So how many sides do we have? Three. They gave us two of our sides and they gave us our perimeter. So we combine the two sides that we knew. So 3x and 5x made 8x. 4y and negative 1 made 3y. And then we had to get our unknown side by itself. Oh, so, we so we just subtract it to the other side. No, I understand. We're good? Yeah, because I felt those S's are 5s for a second. Oh, I got confused. It's side 3. Yeah. yeah I just, yep. All right. Let's try another one. Oh, I meant to write my answer. What is the side? What was it? 2x? 2x plus 2y. Yeah, I just wrote it on the side. Thank you, guys. All right. This one. Here, it wants us to find the area. So, on eight. We're so we're multiplying okay so we're having to multiply because again area of a triangle equals one half base times the height so area equals one half what's our base uh, our base is actually the 2b or i guess it's on its side huh does it really matter no. so, and how do you multiply this what is the process? Distribute. Well, worry about that. I, I, we'll do the half at the end. Foil. foil. We got to distribute. We got to do a whole lot of distribution. Let's do our foil, or if you're a box person, your box. But I'm a traditional foil. So first, what is 4B times 2B? 8B. 8B what? It's squared. And then 4B times negative 2? Wait, negative, eight. negative 8b. So that's our outside. And then our inside, 2 times 2b. And then our last, 2 times negative 2. Negative 4. We can clean this up. So when we clean this up, what do we get? 8 minus 4b 
minus four. And now we're gonna multiply everything by a half. So area equals what's half of eight? What's half of four? And then, and there's your, what, say it again? What should the other A be? We combine negative four B, I mean negative eight B plus four B becomes, Oh yeah. Because they're like terms and they can be simplified. It got brighter in here. I don't like them. It did. The sun is out. It needs to go. So we get four B squared minus two B minus two. All right. I want y'all to do nine. You're doing nine. You got it. I'm positive. You're doing number nine, Tevin. Right. Um, yep. Yes. You do. Okay. You do okay. need to do foil. Number nine. The area of the rectangle. <clears throat> So you have two r plus five and four r minus one. Not bad, right? Oh, yeah. oh, 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 Questionable at all times. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, have a little more faith in yourself. All right, really quick. Let's go over it. So, um, here finding the area. So we have two r plus five times four r minus one, and we're just gonna distribute two times two r times four r. 8R eight R eight R squared. 2R times negative 1? Negative 4. Perfect. 5 times 4R? 20R. 20R. And 5 times negative 1? Negative 5. Negative 5. Combine our like terms and we get? 8R squared plus 18R minus 5. Bam. Boom. You can do it. <laughs> okay. So we know the area equals 8R squared plus 18R minus 5. Yeah? All right, so you remember how I was trying to tell you all, I tried to give you as many different possibilities of working with geometry and polynomials. So there's there. I don't know what that was. Uh, as we get further down, um, I don't know if they're going to have you trying to find the area and subtract. So like if you look right here, um, we have to find the area and subtract them. Does that make sense? Because you're finding the missing space. So if you can do this, can you do this? Yeah. No. This time you're just finding the area of two rectangles and subtracting them. Okay. Because it says of a shaded region. So we would have to find the area and subtract. So I'm going to do the little one. Or which one should we do first? The big box or the little box? Little, so we get the little first. The little area equals 2h times h, which is what? 2h squared. 2H squared. Easy enough, right? Then we're going to do the big. 
the area of the big is 3h times h plus 2. What does that make? 3 h plus 2? It's 3h times h plus 2? Yeah. Oh, you multiply it. 3, so it becomes 6h. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and it wants us to find, so it's our big minus our little. So we have 3h squared plus 6h minus 2h squared. What do we get? There we go, h squared plus 6h. 3h, 3 minus 2, it's 1. And did 6h had a friend? No. Oh, okay. So then the shaded area is h squared plus 6h. Okay, so it may build on those additional skills. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, and so it's an open box of what could be thrown at us as far as different types of problems. Okay. Um, which is why there's, I tried to get, like, there's so many examples and each problem is slightly different because. Ah, I don't. I don't like this space of unknown. See how we did. So on eleven, what's the area of our big? Good, good job. And so for the area of big, you have your x, and then this is two x plus x. So that makes what? Three x. So that gives you three x squared. The area of your small. It's just going to be 3x, right? It's length and its width is 3x. So again, you're subtracting big minus small. So we have 3x squared minus 3x. That's it. That's all you could do. The only other thing is that you could do is that most mathematicians would like to simplify this. And so if I wanted to simplify this, I would just factor out 3x. And that's all you can do. There's not much else you can do. Um, because do we know the value of x? No. no. All right. Let's go on to 11. I mean, 12. 12. It says find the area of this one. So again, our big was what? For our square, what was our small? So what was our area? 3 up squared. Yeah. That's it. Remember Casper the friendly one? Casper the friendly one is there. Okay. How do we feel? Doable. All right. Hold on. You see nothing. You saw nothing. You saw nothing. All right. So um, on here, as you can see, the rest are also the same, right? So we're not going to do, um, these are going to be left for you to practice. They're all the same, just different numbers. Um, for the most part, the only one that I wanted to talk to you about, I'm going to do one of them, which is it? So I was either going to do 13 or 16. Which would y'all want me to do? 16. 16? All right, 16 is the winner. The reason being is that for this one, you're subtracting more than one term at a time. So, yes, so we're gonna do 16 and then the rest are gonna be practiced, got it? So on 16, the area of my big, so I'm gonna do the big, which is gonna be length times width. So we have two X times two X plus one. And that's going to equal right easy enough all right then we're going to do the small the small here equals x minus one times x minus one this would be what situation takes place foil right i would have to foil that's going to give me x squared minus 2x plus one Okay, do y'all remember when we were doing long division and I said, when you're subtracting the polynomials, you have to change the signs of each 
each term of all the terms. That applies here. So when we're subtracting this, it is 4x squared plus 2x minus x squared minus 2x plus 1. This is why you have to change the signs because that minus is affecting every single term, right? So when I'm doing it, it's actually 4x squared. My pen did something weird there. I don't know. I... It's my pen. It's tired. Okay, you have to change every single sign. You can't just change the first one. You have to change the, the sign of all of the terms. All right, now we just clean it up. It didn't even make it. Okay, there we go. So first up, we have 4x squared and negative 1x squared, and that gives us perfect. Plus 4x, and then minus 1. So that would be the area of the shaded region, okay? So just make sure when you're subtracting more than one term, you have to subtract all of them. Right. Huh? Got lost. Okay. Got lost. Let me finish an answering hers right now. So um, here on the combining, so 4x squared and negative 1x squared made 3x squared. So you change the sign. So here you have to change because you're subtracting the entire thing. So if I'm subtracting the entire thing, it's going to have to be, each one's going to have to be subtracted. So it became negative X squared. A negative times a negative is a positive. A negative times a positive is a negative. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Um. I, I'm, I'm, it's there's a one here. So it's distribution of that negative one. When you're subtracting something, you're multiplying by a negative and taking that away, right? Mm -hmm. So that's all we had to do. We couldn't just put a subtraction and only subtract X squared. We have to subtract all of them. Okay. So then we end up with three X squared plus four X minus one. All right. All right. The last ones that we're going to do are the last three. Yes. Uh, sure. All right. And this will conclude our geometry section of polynomials. So these are our last three types. Now, again, it's kind of a like, I don't know what we're going to get. So that's why we have a variety. So here it says find the volume, okay? So we have three sides with three terms. What I wanted to model here is that when you're multiplying um, with polynomials, just write them out and multiply from left to right. That's because order doesn't matter when it comes to multiplication. It has what's called commutative, commutative and associative properties, okay? Yes, which means that I'm allowed to order, to multiply in whatever order, and I'm allowed to multiply whoever group together I want, right? Because the result is still gonna be the same. The only thing I strongly suggest is that you put your monomial first, distribute, then FOIL. Um, other than that, you do you, boo. All right, here we go. So volume here, I have my, my length, my width, and my height. So I'm multiplying all, all three. So we have 2x times x plus 4 times x minus 3. So when I say work from left to right, you only can multiply two things at a time. So left to right, we're doing 2x times x, which is? Then we have 2x times 4. 8x, and now I'm down to this. And now I'm going to FOIL, right? So we distribute. Now we're going to FOIL. So we have 2x squared times x. 
2x to the third. 2x squared times negative 3. Perfect. 8x times x. Perfect. And then 8x times negative 3. Okay. I've now fully distributed, got rid of parentheses. So my last thing to do is combine like terms. So my like terms are, and what does that make? There we go. So we have 2x cubed plus 2x squared minus 24x. Yes, there are additional fractions. Okay. How do you feel about multiplying more than one polynomial? Doable. Okay. Again, just go monomial, binomial, binomial, multiply left to right. Okay, so the volume here was 2x cubed plus 2x squared minus 24x. All right. So now we're going to do the circle inside of the rectangle. Again, just because they're not the same shape family, is the process going to change? No, it's not. You said, yeah, it's not. It's not. We still got to find our big and our small, right? So the area of the big, how, what's the area of my big? 10. And it's because you have 10x times 5x, which makes 10x squared. Then I'm going to find the area of my small. How do you find the area of a, a circle? You need um, pi r squared, right? Pi r squared. So I need to know the radius. Well, from looking here, I know my diameter is what? 2x. So what is my radius? 1x, right? Because x plus x is going to give me 2x. So therefore, this is pi x squared. Yeah? And what do I need to do with these two? Subtract. So we have 10x squared minus pi x squared. Now, since we don't know the value of x, is there any reason for me to make pi into a decimal? No. So all we're going to do is clean this up, and we're left with x squared is 10 minus pi. So as soon as I know x squared, I will put that in, and I can figure out the rest. But this is my exact value of my shaded region. Okay. All right, last but not least is an example of when you have enough information to solve for your variable. So this time I should get a numerical answer. Huh? We're on number 44. Oh. So in 24, it says the total degrees in a triangle is 180. Find the measure of the third degree. Do y'all remember that from geometry? Yes. The interior angle sum is? 180. No, just the sum of all oh. three angles has to equal 180, right? So they gave me, boom, boom, boom. All of my, do they give me three angles? Yes. Yeah. So I know that 180 equals x plus 15 plus 2x plus 1 plus x. Can I solve for x? Yes. What is step one to solve for x? Combine my like terms. So we have 1x, 2x, and 1x. What does that make? 4x. Then we have 15 and 1. And what does that make? 16. Oh, look. A good old, a good old algebra problem. What are my two steps for this two-stepper? There we go. And what does that leave me with? What'd you say? 164. There we go. And then my last step is? Okay. What is the value of my x?
It's, it's 41. What are you doing? Four goes into 16 four times. Four goes into four one time. But how did you have how did you have those numbers? Yeah. You were getting there weirdly, but yeah. You just had to do this. Four divided by sixteen is four. Four divided by four is one. 41. Yeah. It's called shorthand division. Yep. I mean, your way was fun. All right, so I, <laughs> I was like, what? Why are you throwing these numbers at us? Um, so X equals 41. So if I had to find the other two angles, could I find them? Yeah, I could. So just let's do it for, for fun. What would be the measure of this angle? 43. Good job. What would be the angle of this angle? Oh, angle of measure of this angle, <laughs> 56. You know what I meant? Angle of this angle? Interpret me. All right, easy enough. Okay, so we only can solve for the variable if we have it equal to a number. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And in this case, were we able to do that? Yeah. Yes. All the other ones, all we had to do was just simplify as much as we could because we did not have a way to solve for that information. Got it? All right, that concludes our polynomial geometry.